Hi guys, welcome to day two. Today I'm going to review solving quadratic equations, which is basically a review of factoring. Factoring is one of those topics that can really make or break you in upper level math. It's like, if you didn't know how to add negative three plus five, could you imagine doing well in algebra one? Well, factoring is one of those things that can really prevent you from doing well in upper level math because it's included in so many things. However, I'm going to teach it in a way that I think might be a little slow to learn at first, but once you get good at it, it's much, 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 much faster. You don't have to show so much work. So I'm not going to use what you may have learned, which was the AC method. I hate the AC method. I'm going to just do some trial and error with a little bit of um, trickery that I've learned through the years. So if you need to listen to this video more than once, have at it. If you need me to do more examples for you, have at it. But here we go. I'm also kind of practicing with the picture of me and the picture of the lesson. So I don't really know what I'm doing with this gadgetry. I'll give it my best shot. Here I go. So quadratic equations. All right, the first example. First of all, how do you know it's a quadratic equation? A quadratic equation means that it has an x squared as its highest exponent. To solve a quadratic equation, you want to always start by setting it equal to zero. And you want to, at the same time, make sure that the quadratic term or the squared term is positive. So, you guys are in calculus, you're not in baby school, so we can just move things over. I'm going to move the x squared to the left, which is going to make it a positive x squared. Move the 7x to the left, which will make it a negative 7x. And the 10 is going to stay where it's at, but that means there's nothing on the right, so there's a 0 over there. Next, this is the easy type of factoring. Since there's no number in front of the quadratic term, it's just an x squared or 1x squared. So this is the kind that you can factor very easily. Just find two numbers that multiply to a positive 10 but add to a negative 7. Now that easy type of factoring can only be used when there's a 1 in front of the x squared. So I'm going to factor it. To get the x squared, it's x times x. And now two numbers that multiply to a positive 10 and add to a negative 7. Hopefully that's easy, negative 5 and negative 2. And now we use what's called the zero product property to say if this junk times this junk is equal to zero, then if either group equals zero, you'll get an answer. So in short, you set each group equal to zero. I'm going to show that step that you would normally do in your head. If x minus 5 equals zero, then x equals 5 is one answer. If x minus 2 equals zero, then x equals 2 is the other answer. Again, you don't need to show this step. Do that in your head. So we have two solutions, which is very common for a quadratic equation because of the x squared. You can have two or less solutions. And if you plug in that x is 5 here and here, and then you plug in that x is 2 here and here, you'll find that both of them equal 10 and they check. Okay? So that's the basics when there's a 1 out in front. That's the easiest type of problem you can have. So now, what do you do when there's a number other than a 1 out in front? So this next example is where my trickery is going to come in a little bit. Okay? So first of all, notice that the equation is already set equal to zero. That's just to save you a little bit of time. All right, now, to get this 2x squared, I'm going to need a 2x times another x. All right, now, this is where it's, I'm going to go a little slow, and it's going to seem like it takes forever, but eventually this is much, much faster. Okay, next. These two numbers have to multiply to 4, and I'm not going to worry about the sign yet. Well, what are my choices? Numbers that multiply to 4. It could be, and this is going to be silly that I'm writing this down, but you'll see that this saves a lot of time, and you do this in your head eventually. You can really, once you learn this method, you can do it in your head much faster. So to get a 4, it could be 1 and 4, or 4 and 1, which is actually a different option, or 2 times 2. Now, here's my huge, super-duper time saver that none of the books ever teach, and it took me forever to learn it myself. Here it is. Ready? 
looking at the original problem. Is there a GCF other than 1 for 2, 9, and 4? In other words, is there anything that 2, 9, and 4 can all be divided by other than 1? And hopefully you're saying no. Well, if there's no GCF in the original problem, then there won't be a GCF in either of the two groups. Here's what that means. Don't put anything here with the 2 that's divisible by 2. So I'm not going to put the 4 here, which means this option is stupid. I'm not going to put a 2 here, so this option is stupid. And all I'm going to check is 1 and 4. It's the only thing that I can try. So I'm going to put the 1 here and the 4 here. Notice I didn't mess with the signs yet. I saved that for last. Now, when you factor, you're doing the opposite of foiling. So the outers and inners are what we're going to focus on right now. The first was the 2x and the x. The last was the 1 and the 4. Well, now my outers and inners are going to add up to this negative 9. So here's how I do it. It's, I call it the double smiley face. Multiply this, you get 1x. Multiply this, you get 8x. And again, you're going to do all of this in your head. I'm just going real slow for you. I need 1x and 8x to add up to negative 9x. Working with the signs. I do the signs last. Working with the signs. Can I get 1 and 8 to add up to a negative 9? Okay, sure, if I make them both negative, then they'll add up to a negative 9, which is what I need. So if this guy is negative 1, that, this one affects this. If this guy is negative 8, that affects this. Double check, negative 1 times a negative 4 is a positive 4. I don't know what that is. All right, so that's kind of messy. Let me go backwards a little bit. So now I've got it factored. I'm going to write it again because I've sort of made a disaster of this. It factors into 2x minus 1 and x minus 4. And if all else fails, you could FOIL it out and double check it. Now remember, if there wasn't an equal sign here, if it was just an expression, then you'd be done. This is factored. And your homework, some of them just say factor. And that's the end. And it doesn't matter which group you, say you wrote first. But for this, it says solve because there's an equation. So for this one, we have an equal sign, and that means I need to find what does x equal. I've got to go a little further. So let's start with the easy one. Set this one equal to 0, and you're going to get x equals 4. Off the top of my head, that's easy. You're also going to get to where you can do this in your head, okay? I'm going to show you now, but I want you to start doing it in your head so you get faster. I'm going to solve for x. Add 1 to both sides, and you get that 2x equals 1, divide by 2, and x equals 1 half is the other answer. But look at this original factor. Can you just visualize? You're going to add 1, which gives you a positive 1, and then divide by 2. That's why your answer is just 1 half. Try to go from here straight to here, so you don't have to spend so much time with every single step in the world. Okay? All right, now that's pretty much the lesson. All I'm going to do now for the next couple is just show you a little bit more how to factor when there's a number in front of the x squared and how to get a little faster at it. Okay? So this one. This one, if you were trying to do the AC method, I don't know if you remember the AC method, but the AC method is where you multiply the A and the C, the 6 and the 24. The AC method would take you forever with this one because the numbers are so big. And the AC method, no matter what, it's four steps. It takes forever. With my method, you can do it much faster in your head once you get good at it, even though it might seem slow at first. So here I go. To get the 6x squared, keep in mind it could be 6 times 1, or it could be 3 times 2, all right? No mathematical fact, but I usually start with the two numbers that are closer together. That's just me making stuff up. All right, so I have 3 and 2. Next, to get a 24, oh my goodness, there's a huge list. I'm going to write the whole list. You don't need to do that because that's just wasting time, but I just want you to see all the possibilities. 1 and 24. 
24 times 1, 2 times 12, 12 times 2, 3 times 8, 8 times 3, 4 times 6, and 6 times 4. I remember learning factoring as a kid, and I know I tried every single one of these stupid numbers. I was that person that tried everything. Well, here's my trick. Is there a GCF in the original problem? Anything 6 and 7 and 24 can be divided by? No. That means there's no GCF in either group. That means don't put anything here that's divisible by 3. Don't put anything here that's divisible by 2. So, should I try the 1 and 24? No, because the 24 is divisible by 2. Should I try the 24 and 1? No. The 24 is divisible by 3. Should I try 2 and 12? Nope. 12 is divided by 2. Should I try 12 and 2? Nope. 12 is divisible by 3. Should I try 3 and 8? Nope. 3 is divisible by 3. Should I try 8 and 3? Maybe 8 is not divisible by 3, and 3 is not divisible by 2. That might work. But just to go on a little bit further, how about 4 and 6? Should I have even tried that? Nope, the 6 doesn't go with the 2. And 6 and 4 also no, because the 6 isn't, shouldn't be divided by 3. can be divided by 3. So the only thing I should try is 8 and 3. Now, before I try that, if 8 and 3 doesn't work, it means I need to go back and switch to 6 and 1 and try all over again this whole list. Okay? Which can suck, but again, usually you find the answer pretty quickly. You start to be able to see the inners and outers in your head. So I'm going to put my 8 and 3 here. Okay? Now, inners and outers have to add to negative 7. Inners multiply to 16x. Outers multiply to 9x. Can I get 16 and 9 to add or subtract to a 7? Yes. Okay, well, I need it to add up to a negative 7. So I need this to be a negative and this a positive. Now follow it out. The negative 16 means the 8 is negative. The positive 9 means my 3 is positive. And double check this sign, which I'm hiding right there. This sign in here, yep, right there. Negative 24 means these two signs had to be different, and they are negative times positive. Okay? So, and then when all else fails, foil it out if you want to, just to double check. Okay, so I've got my factoring done. I'm going to rewrite it again because I made a mess of it trying to explain it. So here it was factored. 3x minus 8 was one factor. 2x plus 3 was another factor. If I just said factor, that's the end. But because this is an equation, you have to set each factor equal to 0 to solve. Set this one equal to 0, and you'll get x equals. You're going to add 8, divide by 3. Set this one equal to 0. You're going to subtract the 3, divide by 2. And those are my two solutions. I hope that that wasn't too bad for you. Let me see if I have one more. I can't remember. Um, is that different? Did I already do that one? I can't. <laughs> Let me see. It looks like, up. Oh, it's different than the other one. i tell you what. Why don't you guys hit pause on the recording and try this one on your own. See if you can figure it out. And then when you're ready, I'll work it out for you. Well, I hope that went well for you. Let me see. I'm going to try to get the 6x squared. I'm going to try 3x times 2x again. To get the 12, again, you don't need to write this down. 1 and 12, 12 and 1, 2 and 6, 6 and 2, 3 and 4, 4 and 3. And you can just visualize all those in your head. Oh, by the way, if there is a GCF in the original problem, whatever that GCF is, if they can all be divided by 2, it's an equation. Divide the whole thing by two, get rid of it, and then you can still use my trick.
okay? All right, so now, out of all these choices, I'm not going to try the 12, the 12, the 6 is a no, the 6 is a no. Nope, I'm going to only try 4 and 3, putting the 4 here and the 3 here. The inners multiply to 8x. The outers multiply to 9x. And I need a negative 17, so I'll make them both negative, which means this is a negative and this is a negative. Double check, two negatives do multiply to a positive 12. Now set each factor equal to zero. If 3x minus 4 equaled zero, add 4, divide by 3, and you'd get x is 4 thirds. If 2x minus 3 equals zero, add 3 and divide by 2, and you get 3 halves. And those are our two answers. Hope you did well. Okay, so your homework today is a review worksheet on factoring. Hopefully you like this new method. If you, I'm, I'm sure you haven't been doing it this way. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice. But once you get the hang of it, trust me, this is a lot, a lot, a lot faster. And you can start to do it in your head much easier. And you'll see even tomorrow the reason we need to be able to factor quickly in our heads is because next we have to factor trig equations and all kinds of things. So it comes up pretty often. Hope you all are doing well. See you next time. Bye.